Hello again. In this first video, I would like to introduce you to the very few hard facts we know about the case. But I will also tell you about the legends. The fact is that on the morning of Friday, May 25th, 1866, a young woman named Laura Foster, 22 or 23 years of age, left the home she shared with her father and younger siblings in the small settlement German Hill in Caldwell County in Western North Carolina, never to be seen alive again. In the months following her disappearance, search parties were organized but had no luck in finding her. Around July 10th, her former lover, Thomas C. Doola, known to the world as Tom Dooley, a resident in the Reedy Branch settlement near Elkville in Wilkes County, was arrested and incarcerated in Wilkes County Jail in Wilkesboro. On September 2nd or 3rd, Laura's body was finally discovered in a shallow grave on a low ridge in Wilkes County, not far from the home of Tom Dooley. Another of Tom Dooley's lovers, the married Anne Melton, was arrested as well. In October, they were put to trial for killing Laura Foster. Tom's defense lawyer, former Governor Zebulon Baird Waynes, got the case transferred to Iredell County as he didn't believe Tom and Anne would get a fair trial in Wilkes County, where almost everybody had heard about the case and had an opinion on who did it. Vance also succeeded in having the trial against him separated and Tom's trial was to take place first. Tom was convicted of murder and sentenced to be hanged. The case was appealed to North Carolina Supreme Court, who found that there have been errors made during the trial and that Tom should have a new trial. This took place in January 1868. Once again, Tom was convicted and sentenced to be hanged, and once again, the case was appealed. This time, a new trial was rejected by the Supreme Court, and on May 1st, 1868, Tom was hanged in Statesville in Iredell County. <clears throat> Later that year, Anne Melton was acquitted of all charges and set free. She returned to her husband and lived with him until her death a few years later. So much for the facts at the moment, let me turn to the legends. From these few facts, the local folklore in Wilkes County and elsewhere interpreted the events. Since it would be too much to retell all the different legends, I will just tell one version here. This is the most common of the legends as I heard it in 2002, before really digging into the matter, combined with a few interpolations from other versions. Tom Dooley was born and grew up in the small hamlet of Elkville in western Wilkes County, North Carolina in the mid-1800s. His father died when he was nine, and Tom grew up with his mother and his siblings, two older brothers and a younger sister. When he was in his early teens, he got involved with a neighbor girl, Anne Foster, who was about one year older than he, and the two of them soon began a sexual relationship. Then the Civil War broke out. Tom's two older brothers enlisted in the war on the Confederate side, and a year later Tom himself joined the army, although he had to lie himself older as he was only 16 at the time. Anne promised to be true to him while he was away and wait for him to return. Tom fought bravely in several battles until the war ended in 1865. Then he returned to his home. When he got home, he got some bad news. Both of his brothers had died in the war, and while he was away, Anne had forgotten her promise to be true and waiting for him and had married a wealthy but much older man by the name of James Melton. Tom was devastated, but his devastation didn't last long as he started seeing Anne's cousin, Laura Foster. She lived in a small settlement, German Hill, in neighboring Caldwell County, about five miles from where Tom Dooley lived. Some let versions of the legend makes Laura and Anne sisters instead of cousins. Some of the locals agreed that Tom only courted Laura 
to make Anne jealous, while others are convinced that he meant his courting seriously. Soon after, another cousin of Anne's, Pauline Foster, arrived in the Melton household, where she was hired as a farm laborer, and very soon Tom was involved with her as well. While Anne appeared to accept the relationship between Tom and the rather plain Pauline, she got extremely jealous of Tom's relationship with Laura, who, like herself, was a beauty. Laura had quite a few admirers besides Tom. To the locals, she was known as a girl with round heels, meaning that she was an easy lay, to use a new expression. Among her admirers was a school teacher, in some versions a sheriff, by the name of Bob Cummings, a Yankee who had arrived in Elkville after the war. Laura and Tom agreed, despite her many other suitors, that the two of them would run away from home and get married. One night, Laura packed all the clothes she could carry along on a horseback and left her home on her father's horse, and she was never seen again alive. The family searched for her, but without success, and people in the neighborhood were convinced that she had eloped with Tom. Some days, in some versions up to three weeks, after her disappearance, the horse was found grassing in the meadow with a broken bridle. A renewed search was launched, especially at the initiative of Bob Cummings, and the search party found a place in the woods where her horse had apparently been tied to a tree, but there was no sign of Laura. Now a rumor began to circulate among the locals that Laura had been murdered and her body thrown into the Yatkin River that ran through the area. Shortly after, Anne Melton had a quarrel with her cousin and employee Pauline Foster. Witnesses heard Pauline say to Anne that she would tell what she knew about Laura's disappearance, and Anne had replied that she and Pauline were equally guilty. Two months after her disappearance, during another search of the area, Colonel James Horton found Laura's body on a low ridge overgrown with ivy and laurel near Tom Dooley's home, when his horse snorted as it passed the grave. The grave was short and shallow, and her legs were broken to make the body fit into the grave. The local physician found that she had been stabbed in the chest, some legends add that he found several stab wounds. Laura appeared to be insane, pregnant for those who didn't know the meaning of the old word. Some legends even know that she was three months pregnant. Laura's body was brought to a place near her home and buried on a small hill now known as Laura Foster Hill. The investigation of the murder began. Bob Cummings claimed that he had found a handkerchief belonging to Anne Melton in the grave and therefore an arrest warrant against both Tom and Anne was issued. Everybody who knew Laura, however, was under suspicion, and many of those who had known her fled the state, including Tom Dooley and other young men. Tom Dooley went to Tennessee, where he was working under the name Tom Hall, and he worked for four days on a farm where he earned money for a pair of boots. Then he fled again. But shortly after, he was caught by a search team led by Bob Cummings and including James Melton and two deputy sheriffs. Tom was brought back to Elkville together with a Jack Keaton who has been arrested along with him. Bob Cummings told the authorities that Tom Dooley had killed Laura Foster and Jack Keaton and Ann Melton had helped him. Keaton, however, could provide an alibi and was released while Ann Melton was arrested. When Tom was arrested and charged with murder, he was incarcerated in Wilkes County Jail in a cell next to the one Anne Melton was occupying. When the trial was about to begin, Tom's cousin, Colonel James Dooler, persuaded Tom's regiment commander from the war, former North Carolina governor and at the time of the murder, lawyer in the city of Charlotte, Sibyl and Vance, to defend Tom. Vance did his best, but Cummings produced a witness, Betsy Scott, that testified that he had met Laura on the morning of her disappearance and that Laura had told her that she was on the way to meet Tom Dooley near his home. The two of them would run away together and get married. Pauline Foster testified that she knew that Tom had killed Laura and that Anne had helped to hide the body. The jury found Tom guilty and the judge sentenced him to be hanged, but he appealed and the Supreme Court found that errors had been made during proceedings so a new trial had to take place. 
Once more, Tom was found guilty, and once more he appealed, but this time with no luck. On a beautiful May morning, Tom was pra- transported from the jail on a cart. Along the way, he sat on his own coffin while he played his banjo and sang the song that later became so well-known and popular, a song he himself had written while in jail. On the way, he joked with the sheriff and said, Had I known that you would use such a fine new rope, I would have washed my neck. And just before getting hanged, he raised his hand and said, Do you see this hand? Do you see it tremble? I never heard one hair on Laura's head. Tom was hung from an old oak tree in a valley not far from Wilkesboro. Some legends had that he was hanged from the so-called Tory Oak in Wilkesboro. When he was dead, his body was given to his sister and her husband, who brought it home to Elkville, where he was buried under an apple tree close to the house he had lived in with his mother. Later, Seb Rance also defended Anne Melton, and unlike Tom, she was acquitted of murder. While she was in prison, she said, there will not be put a rope around this beautiful neck, and she was right. Rumors of her involvement in the murder followed her for the rest of her life, though. Some years later, Anne Melton died after being crushed under a cart that rolled over, and on her deathbed said that you see hell's fire at the end of the bed, and that black cats crawled up and down the walls, and that she could hear hissing noises like hot, glowing stones that were thrown into cold water. There exist many different versions of what else Anne said on her deathbed, but the most popular version is that she told someone that she knew something that could have saved Tom from the gallows, which by most is taken as an admission that she was the real killer. So much for the legends that, of course, are very, very wrong about what really happened. In my next video, I will tell a bit about the area where the crime took place, and I will also introduce the main characters of the case, Tom Dooley, Laura Foster, Anne Melton, Pauline Foster, and someone not mentioned in this video by the name of James Isbell. I will probably also kill off Bob Cummings. This was all from Daddy's Age for this time. Until next time, have a lot of fun.